If you had told 17-year-old me in 2013 that in just a few short years, one of the most popular forms of media, and one that I would be thoroughly entrenched in myself, would be documentaries, I would have called you insane. I had not yet reached my early college years, where I would be introduced to people like Michael Moore and Werner Herzog, and I had also not yet begun my temporary journey with journalism, where I would hone my own media criticism skills and learn to appreciate the artistic as much as I did the popular. But none of that is particularly pertinent to the topic of this video. Now you see, because though documentaries have existed for decades, before the existence of the internet, and people like Michael Moore became pop culture figures well before the popularity of social media, it is important to point out that services like Netflix and other streaming platforms are transforming what it means to be a fan of documentaries. Netflix has become saturated with these original documentaries. And Netflix documentarian has become about as legitimate a career goal as any other career in filmmaking. Netflix isn't the only culprit responsible in growing these internet-based forms of edutainment, as YouTube has its own version of the Netflix documentarian in video essays, like Down the Rabbit Hole and The Gaming Historian. However, these Netflix-based documentaries have something that older documentaries did not have, and that video essayists often lack the social power of, a near total following of internet culture. From Making a Murderer to Tiger King, Murder, Madness, and Mayhem, these trendy Netflix docuseries create enormous internet followings that often have real-world impact in one way or another. In 2015, Making a Murderer led to a petition of over 500,000 signatures to be sent to the president, calling for the release of Stephen Avery. And today, five years later, the immense popularity of Netflix's Tiger King has led to the case surrounding the murder of Don Lewis, late husband of one of the series' central characters, Carol Baskin, for which she is suspected to be reapproached. Time magazine stated that the sheriff responsible for the case explained, I would be foolish if I didn't take advantage of the show's popularity. Beyond Baskin and the Lewis case, investigations into several of the series' as featured big cat collectors are being undertaken far closer than they ever have been before. In an era of hashtag movements and the constant chase of internet clout, it's no surprise that such strong public support can be thrown behind issues like murder and animal abuse. However, not every documentary on Netflix, or even every documentary produced and put on the internet, are as popular as these two were. So, what is the secret? In reality, there is very little in common between Making a Murderer and The Tiger King. But there is a single powerful thread that connects the two together, and that is storytelling. No documentarian worth his salt whether it's Michael Moore, Werner Herzog, or the directorial team of Eric Good and Rebecca Chiklin, who produced Tiger King, will claim any bias-free approach. They are either approaching the topic with a social justice motivation, or they are simply pursuing a topic that entrances them or interests them. And this act of having any interest in a topic at all creates bias in and of itself. And it is that idea, that inherent bias, that drives most documentary work. Following the immense success of Tiger King, Baskin lashed out towards the documentarian, stating that she was misled about their goals and that they held an immense amount of bias against her. They quickly responded, explaining in no uncertain terms that with any project that goes on for five years, things evolve and change. And we followed it, as any good storyteller does. That word, storyteller, is my smoking gun for this video. There is a misconception by many that documentarians are supposed to act in the same way America's idealized journalist does, bias-free and reporting the facts. But in reality, they are nothing more than storytellers, recounting a tale that they find entrancing and important. It is important to recognize in a series fraught with sex cults, potential murders, and narcissistic businessmen, that the filmmakers saw the insanity that was Joe Exotic 
and followed him with a commendable fever and passion. Following exotic story, fraught with drug addiction, manipulative relationships, and an intense thirst for attention, was a brilliant move and a shining example of what makes for an excellent documentary. An eye for story. Incredible story allows viewers to become deeply involved in the lives and mischievous insanity of the characters they are watching, just like a sitcom or a TV drama. However, these people are not just characters. They are real people with real lives who've made very real mistakes. At times, the feverish internet following these shows get can lead to positive things, like the reinvigoration of the Don Lewis case. But just as often, it can lead to some very real negative consequences. Personal harassment from the proverbial internet hive mind is an obvious problem, but even more troubling at times can be the groups of people who start to idealize these stars. People like Joe Exotic become internet heroes, sometimes folk heroes, and at the worst of times, these documentaries can renew long-gone discussions of love for notorious serial killers like Ted Bundy. However, the filmmakers cannot really be blamed for these issues. In the end, it's no different than someone idealizing Joey from Friends, Don Draper from Mad Men, or Tyrion Lannister from Game of Thrones. All that filmmakers can do is tell a good story, and the internet will do what it is that the internet does.